mentioned, <laughs> has anybody mentioned you can sing? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's I, funny. I gotta tell you, I just think singing is the most beautiful art form, and I, I the good. idea you can stand up there and do that is breathtaking. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> You finish a scene and you're like, you feel like you killed it and it was intense and that's how I feel, I feel very fortunate. Just to have it as an outlet as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like a I release. Mean, um, yeah. No, but you had a great last year. So how is 2024 right. treating you? So far, so yeah. good. I flew to New York City yeah. and it's snowing. I know, a blanket of snow at I Central know. Park. It's very it nice. It's kind of nice. But it, the traffic wasn't nice. Yeah. No, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, because usually I walk and the one day I choose not to walk, we, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, it, Took an hour. And by the way, this is <laughs> this is the new like. Oh, they. I know, no, but I'm surprised like somebody hasn't made, like that. You know how Me everybody too. wears. You know everybody wears earphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm just always like, really. Really? Just people like walk around with earphones? Oh, that's Because I think me. they you think it me. makes them look like no. they're like a rapper it's or something? because I want my playlist. No, no I want what I'm saying is I know you have a big playlist and I added to it, but, <laughs> but like a jewelry designer should make like a lariat, like with some precious, because it's kind of yeah. cool. Like I'm going to get outside, one. Yeah. So just for, when you see a picture, like a paparazzi picture, I'm going to be wearing. I'm, like, I'm in, actually in shocked ears. though. I'm shocked that they haven't come out with these to like sell them because they are, it's the best way. No, but it, but it music. also just kind of looks chic. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's what I was going for. Um, well, we mentioned awards uh, because you killed it at the Oscars. Uh, Jimmy thank Lee you. posted this photo last year at the Golden Globes. Oh, yes. <laughs> First of all, no, no. From, I mean, this, from this photo alone, we could be friends. Like, that is my level of energy. So, <laughs> the thing that was amazing about the moment is this is about Michelle. Yeah. And I love her. Yeah. And it was a really important moment for her, and it began uh, what became obviously a great year for the movie and in Michelle general, yeah. in particular. Um, and remember, this is a woman who's 60 years old who's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And that was a big moment. Yeah. And what happened from that moment was that a, a, a meme, a woman named Erin Gallagher... On social media. Yeah. On social media, posted what she felt from the picture. I mean, I just, that wasn't, like, I didn't pose for that picture. It's not even a particularly nice picture of me. <laughs> it looks but like you're at a real. game. <laughs> like, like yeah. what? Well, you're not at a Cowboys game, but you're... No, sorry about that. Yeah. I'm so sorry, everybody. It's fine. But, but I'm, I'm in the moment. And what yeah. she was talking about was hype women that women need to hype other women. I think um, we do that. I think they just don't show that. Well, but what she was saying, this was like a really evident moment mm -hmm. where a woman was hyping another woman and we as women need to do more of that. And she created, uh, not, I didn't, I became like the like unofficial spokesperson. Yeah. She created an entire movement, Hype social Women. Media, so yeah. if you wanna go and follow Hype Women, you'll you'll see that it's just an important thing for women to do with each other. Because there's a difference between the word support and hype. Because, you know, people always say support women. I think that you should support everyone as well. But I just mean, when you say hype women, like, hyping is different. It's more of like, you're really like an advocate for them and you are really like, yeah. you're wanting them to it's get their flowers. Energy. Like you're, yeah. It's an energy. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the world is difficult and we all need to support each other. Yeah. And so, Especially those huge moments. You said she'd been waiting like years. Well, you know, but it was that, it was the beautiful part of that. Here's a woman who, I did the movie because Michelle Yeoh was in it. Yeah. Like when they sent me that her. weird script, believe me. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot going on. I did the movie yeah. for two reasons. Yeah. Number one, Michelle Yeoh was going to play Evelyn. Yeah. Number two, it was shot in Los Angeles. And I <laughs> live in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I never work in Los Angeles. Yeah. And so for me to have a job that was in Los Angeles, I thought was worth doing. Yeah. I had no idea what it was going to be. It was a little... I can't imagine reading that script, like how it played out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, all That's... I needed to know was Deirdre, Bo Beardra, my yeah. character. Like, I just needed to know her. And I, I think we've all met Deirdre. Yeah. And I'm not going to say where we've met her because then, <laughs> then the haters are going to come at me and say, you made fun of postal workers. And I'm like, I didn't mean it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's awful right now. Yeah. Don't go on the internet. Don't go um, on the internet. It's not it's a, safe. It can be a scary place. It's a bad place. Yeah. But, Unless you're going for hype women. But we all, <laughs> but we all know Deirdre Bo Beardra. Yeah. Those are people who have power 
and they wield that power over you yeah. because you need them to do something. And it's this weird power trip, and really what it has to do with is sadness yeah. and loneliness. I know and I that's that. all I needed to know about Deirdre was I know her. Yeah. And so the rest of the movie, I wouldn't have told, if you had asked me when we were making it, what's this movie about? Yeah. I'd be like <laughs> <laughs> but, but by the way, but the last scene that I shot, or one of the last scenes I shot, was the reunification between uh, Michelle and, and Key yeah. in the laundromat. And when I saw that and the daughter, I went, yeah. oh, it's about love. Honestly, the very last moment is whenever I was like, about, there we go. It's about love. Yeah. And that's when I went, oh. Yeah. But still, I didn't know it was going to become what it became. Yeah. <laughs> You, I, uh, we're gonna get to the book, but I hear that you're also very passionate about concerts, like live concerts. I am all for this. I hear that you want to start up matinees for okay, concerts. here's what I wanna say. The <laughs> boomers. I have, let me just say something. I'm 65 years old, and mommy goes to bed early. So my point is simply this. I don't understand why, and I always use them, Coldplay. Why don't they do a matinee? I'm for like it. a one o'clock concert. <laughs> Wouldn't you go to a one even a four? <laughs> even a four. I'm down for a four. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Stop. What time did you or say? Or four. Four. A concert is four usually like two is hours. Like left. I'm getting in my pajamas by four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, four is like. Sleep foreplay. Sleep foreplay. <laughs> like, it's like the before the sleep. I am down for a one as well. I'm just telling you, the world is populated by boomers. We're all going to die soon. <laughs> and it would be nice to go to a concert again. I love music. I Me live too. for music. But I'm not going to go to a thing that starts at like... I apparently, you did a concert in Vegas and you started at 9.30. Hey, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 no, here's the thing. No, I did not, no, I did not, no, I did not. You know when I started? 8.30, ma'am, and here's the thing. I, they you asked me, 9:30, no, 8 they asked me, I'm playing, I'm playing a New Year's Eve thing, and literally they gave me the option of, well, do you want to be on stage when it goes midnight or would you rather do like your normal 8.30? And I was like, it, is there a world in which someone chooses to be yes, singing at is, midnight? I like, don't understand it. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm no, for Matt I'm just, well, whatever, I'm starting a movie. All right. Join yeah. me. I would love to. I love that. I love it, I love it. So, wait, let's talk about the new kids. This is your 13th one, right? Yes. So, where's this idea? How do you so, still uh, the, my new book, Just One More Sleep, mm -hmm. Good Things Come to Those Who Wait and Wait and Wait. It's mm -hmm. a book about patience for young children. And adults, um, maybe. And adults. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was born on Christmas Eve 2020, the COVID Christmas, first COVID Christmas. Yeah. And, you know, we were all terrified and masked. that we Christmas album? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, COVID yeah. Christmas. Yeah. And uh, I went out to get my mail on the street, and my neighbor, Betty, and her mom were in front of my house. Yeah. We were like 10 feet away, masked. Hey, Betty. Hey, Jamie. I said, hey, it's Christmas Eve. I said, Santa's on his way. And she went like this. No, Jamie, no. One more sleep, then Santa. And I went... Oh, right. Young children metabolize time yeah. through how many sleeps? Wonderful. And then you think about holidays, birthdays, first day of school, 4th of July, Easter, whatever, whatever yeah. religious holiday or national holiday, Halloween. How many kids are waiting for oh, months son. for Halloween? So yeah. then it helps them metabolize time. And it's funny, and it's a sort of celebration of celebrations, and it's so a relatable. wonderful book for young children. So if you have a young child in your life, it's a new book. Every parent will get that. They'll see the title and go, oh my God, my well, kid's going to love this. That's, that's what they, they do. Speak. Yeah. Like I was on a plane. I'm not going to name her. An actress was coming back from, I guess, the goal. No, from the Critics' Choice Awards. Yeah. We were on a flight from L.A. to New York. Yeah. And she, I told her about the book. She said, that's what I said to my children last night, one more sleep, then mommy, mommy comes, comes home. home. Yeah. And so I do understand that in this modern world, it wasn't when yeah. I was, you know, uh, 
not when my kids were little, but now with little kids, that's how they metabolize time. I know, it's interesting, and they do it all on their own. Nobody and teaches And so it's them a that. book for children. Yeah, I love it. I love yes. so many, and they're so good. But Thank I, I want to say also, you're such a great advocate, um, and you just were honored by the advocate, actually. For I advocate was, the I was their cover girl. Yeah, I love that, though. That's such a proud moment. Thank you. That picture is very hot. You're a very rock and roll man. Um, but where where does your passion come for? Or well, come, come um, my youngest daughter, Ruby, is trans. Yeah. And that was a two year ago, three year ago beginning of that part of her life in our family. Yeah. And for a parent, what's crucial is that you're a student that you love your child, you want to learn how to help and support. And believe me, I get it wrong occasionally, not so much anymore. And so it's simply a process of that. To me, advocating is listening mm. and loving. That's like the combo of what the word advocate means, mm -hmm. is to listen and love. And then if you're a public person, share Action. so that other people can learn and listen and love. You have this massive spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the way to take advantage of fame, which is, you know, wonderful. Obviously, there are benefits to it, but, you know, you do give up a lot of your private life, but then you also have an ability to reach people. And so I've tried... To trade off, yeah. Um, ...to reach people with the work I do. That's awesome. Probably means a lot to, um, to your kids I hope as well. so. Yeah. I mean, that's, again, it's, it's you know, you're a parent, you... Yeah. You're never going to know until I think we're dead. And then yeah. we're like, oh, I really miss my mom. <laughs> like, it's yeah. like, so, you know, I'm. Won't miss anything, though, when we're dead. We're just dead. <laughs> okay. The picture book is called Just One More Sleep. It's Jamie's 13th children's book. And like many children's books, it deals with some of the first moments in a person's life. So we thought we would talk about our first with okay, a segment. And this is a daytime show. This is a daytime show called so We're Gonna I'm Keep really It Family. We're Gonna Keep It Family. Well, babe, that's how you get a family. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, it's so many jokes. Um, so but, many jokes. <laughs> I to look my autobiography. So, <laughs> so many, many jokes. jokes. Dot, dot, dot. All right, well, this is called Firsts of All. Uh oh. There Firsts of All. Yes, we have a theme song. We are wait, very talented. Wait. There's a theme you song. We have a theme yes. song. <laughs> Every moment in life should have a theme song. That's what we say. Yes. You have a theme <laughs> song for this? And you know what's so funny is they just wrote it. <laughs> Okay. Literally two seconds ago in the break. God bless you people. <laughs> They're very talented. Um, okay, let's see what first our supercomputer has loaded up for us to talk about. Here we go. Boom. Oh my God, what is happening? It's very aggressive. It's very aggressive. Oh no, this is like, oh. Oh, oh. your first kiss. Oh, easy. Douglas Ward, sixth grade. We jumped <laughs> off the wall at Betty Wyman's house. <laughs> and we kissed midair. You had a flying first kiss? I did. Sixth grade. Mine sucked. <laughs> it was not good. I'm and? not going to say his name, because well, that would be mean. But be it mean. was horrible. It was like he was searching for something with his tongue. That was the first time? Yeah, no, I had literally never. I mean, other than like, you know, a peck on stage at like musical theater, I didn't count that. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, uh, God, with the box again. <laughs> oh, first celebrity crush, Steven Tyler. <laughs> Wow. I was like, I had so many dreams. I had daddy issues. <laughs> wow. I didn't know this was my show and that we were going to get into all of your daddy yeah, issues yeah. on national television. You're welcome. Um, um, thank you. There's already um, songs about it. It's fine. Mine was Chris Knight of the Brady Bunch. Oh. He was, uh, look at. <laughs> Sweet, sweet, and yeah. cute. And I like, like the middle child. I don't know. I oh. forgot, what do you want? I liked him wild. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's a problem. Can so I I'm hit single. This thing? You can hit it I'm now. I'm hitting it. Yes. Here I go. Oh. First, oh, first book that changed your life, <gasps> Matilda. I, I thought, I th and what I got from that wasn't just the magical element. I got from it when I was a kid. I. I literally saw this at a very young age, fourth, fifth grade, and I was like, okay, you can be born into something and climb out of it. 
And Oof, that's what I that's got deep. from that. When I was like, you can get out of it. You know, you can change your future. And I thought that was magical. I thought that was a really great book. It is magical. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah. And, and it is you've a great changed book. Your and I did, yes. Um, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Buy that book, yeah. people. Um, it's a great my story. book uh, was Go Dog Go. Oh. It was a P.D. Eastman early reader book. It was yeah. about opposites, you know, big dog, little dog in. I read that out. with my kids, yeah. But then in the middle of the book, because you said, like, I can crack wise. Yeah. In the middle of that book, two dogs run into each other, and one of them looks at the other and says, hello, hello. Do you like my hat? <laughs> the other one says, no, I do not like that hat. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> like I thought, wait, what? <laughs> and then, you know, two thirds of the way through the book, hello again, oh, hello. Do you like my hat? No, I do not like that. And then at the end of the book, they run into each other and there's a big party, big dog party, and then at the end of the book, big elaborate hat, hello again, oh, hello. Do you like my hat? Yes, I do. I do like that party hat. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm telling you, some, the non sequitur of do you like my hat made me laugh. I don't know why, it just made me laugh and it has stuck with me my whole life. I think so, that's why I crack wise because crack like, wise, do you me. like my hat? Yeah, but also I like that there's truth in that. We always teach, especially kids in the South, we were growing up, you're not allowed to say that you don't like something. You're not allowed, that's impolite. So you have to, you're like groomed to always be polite. Oh, I see, yeah, But yeah. really, you're just grooming liars. Right, Far Like, Far Like, Far really, out. we're just all lying. That's I, weird. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. You don't have to always and like everything. There, it made no sense to me. And I think the no <laughs> yeah. sense part is what really got in my head. Yeah. That it's just a random, like, why? it's like, ran it's, well, yeah. now you guys say the word basic all the time, but yeah. it was like random. It's just the random question that make that has nothing to do with opposites. Yes. That I just thought was hilarious. Yeah. Like hilarious. <laughs> Changed your life. <laughs> How, am I am question. I done with the game? You are done. You oh. have pressed the button. <laughs> Everyone, I have to do it every time. And everyone here is going home with a copy.